Hey y'all, it's Maddie from the Itty Bitty Homestead Committee. Um, Danny and I are on vacation this week, which is why I'm talking really quiet. Um, and we're at his, uh, his parents' house for a few days. And so I thought it was a great time to kind of sit down and go over uh, just some tips and tricks that we use when we have a pet sitter or when we bring someone in to look after the farm. So go ahead, grab a snack, uh, hit that like, comment, subscribe, and uh, let's get into it. So the first thing we do when we are looking for a pet sitter is we try to properly vet them through either an online source or through friends and family. Our current pet sitter was rated 4.7 stars and even then she had all 5 star reviews until a 1 star review was left with no reasoning. So we were pretty confident in hiring her without any personal references. Once we had agreed upon who was coming to pet sit, we did invite them over onto the farm to verify that they not only had the skill set but they also knew what they were getting into as we have a lot of animals to look after. During this time we introduced them to all of their pets and if they had any special needs just to have a general overview. Um, one of Rick's special needs is that he has a TV on at all times so he can watch his favorite shows and feel a little less lonely when we're gone. Once all the animals are introduced and we go over what is expected we start talking about about a plan of action and how often the sitter should come over. We took our dogs with us this time, so she won't need to come over quite as often, but if they were here, she would need to come over to take them out multiple times during the day. We make sure to leave a list of instructions along with the pet's names and identification. That way there is no confusion once she is left to watch over the animals. Once all that's taken care of and we start focusing on the animals themselves, we make sure to try to make things a little easier by centralizing everything. We give them gravity, food, and water bowls, and we also bring Gigi upstairs. The same true inside is true on the outside as well when it comes to the horses, the ducks, and the chickens. We try to centralize everything just to make it a bit easier and put everything into full view so that things can get done quickly and the sitter doesn't have to spend too much time taking care of the animals. We make sure to separate the hay bales into how much the horses eat per day as well as how much feed they should have per day. We also make sure that the blankets that the horses and the goat need are in plain sight for if it drops into the teens or lower at night. Another thing we do is we move all of the rabbits into the garage so that we don't have to worry about their water bowls freezing and we also move the chickens into their coop in the garage and they lose their free ranging privileges until we get back just so we don't have any kind of freak outs where we have a chicken missing or one getting snatched by a predator while the sitter is here because it's better just to be safe than sorry and I don't know what I would do if we would lose a chicken while the sitter was here and I would freak out on vacation so this is just a little safer and a little easier and less likely to have a missing animal. I also make sure that we have a couple of extra uh, gallon jugs so that the sitter doesn't have to run back and forth and that all of the food uh, is in the garage as well. That way it's just easy and accessible so that everything um, is just a little smoother on the sitter because again we do have a lot of pets and a lot of them have like weird little special requirements that I would rather them be able to take care of and not worry about if they're doing it right or wrong. So yeah, um, this is just with chickens up on their roost for the night in the, uh, the cage because I thought it was adorable before we left. Um, speaking of which, before you leave, just make sure to top off all your water and food just in case, uh, you know, 
something happens and the sitter's running a little late on the first day. So I hope those tips were helpful for you. Um, it is the beginning of Vlogmas and uh, I don't necessarily do very many vlogs, but I will have a couple coming to you, some homesteading wise, some not so homesteading wise. And then also I have a color genetics video coming up because I love color genetics and um, I thought I could hyper fixate on them with you. And I might have a few other really cool video ideas for the month of December. Really the whole goal is to get a video out every single day just for funsies. So again, um, so excited for this week to uh, give you some more content. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.